nicht, was? Und die? Und die hast du auch nicht gekannt, was? <lacht> Guys, welcome to a classic film review of 1931's M, a serial killer crime thriller starring Peter Lorre, Ellen Widman and directed by cinema legend Fritz Lang. Now, it's the chilling tale of a pre-Second World War Berlin being turned upside down as the authorities search for a serial killer that targets young children. Its central performance from Peter Lorre is the stuff of nightmares and the brilliant subversion here is that a small army of local criminals join in the manhunt because they've had enough of the intense police search that's resulted in the city being pretty much locked down, uh, their illicit businesses suffering as a result. Now, it focuses as much on the painstaking police procedures as it does on vigilante mobs and the luring away of young girls. And as such, this may not lay claim to being the first serial killer movie ever made, but certainly the first great one. Uh, Fritz Lang lays down here a template that would inspire movies and television for the next 90 odd years. Let's take a look. <laughs> So M was released in 1931, which is 93 years ago as of the time of filming this video, but it still stands up not just as an artifact of German cinema, but as genuinely one of the top crime thrillers in the history of film. Now, on the surface, the synopsis will seem familiar if you are all tuned into the crime thriller genre. So we have uh, the city of Berlin uh, living in fear after a spate of child abductions and murders take place. Uh, the murderer luring children away with candy and balloons. Uh, the German police have their work cut out due to the sheer amount of tip-offs they're receiving from a public so paranoid that they're quick to accuse anyone acting even remotely suspicious. Uh, the pressure to apprehend the killer builds to the point that Berlin basically is under siege uh, by law enforcement and this leaves little room for, you know, the more honest criminals <laughs> to make a living. Now this in turn leads the underworld of the German city to join the hunt and bring the murderer to justice. Now what's striking re-watching Fritz Lang's M is its structure. Uh, we begin the film with Peter Lorre's pathetic but dangerous Hans Beckett as he whistles In the Hall of the Mountain King by Edvard Grieg, which is a key plot point. He buys a balloon for a girl from a blind beggar and walks away with her and that's the last anyone will see of her. Now, when I first watched the movie, I originally imagined the film would focus on Laurie's child predator, but we then switch here to focus on the police and their efforts to apprehend Becker whilst coming under pressure from the local government. And this section of the film is interesting because we get a very early look in cinema anyway of using fingerprints and handwriting as clues to the killer's identity. And you'll recognise a lot of the modern criminal investigation elements that still crop up today. Uh, seeing Fritz Lang create these on the screen is pretty stunning. Now, that interesting uh, criminals go after the criminal, the cops can't catch gimmick, doesn't arrive until the second half of the film and builds towards a Peter Lorre tour de force as he makes wide-eyed, impassioned pleas to his makeshift jurors that he suffers from a sickness and is at its mercy. It's still bone chilling stuff and is 100% more effective than having him be a soulless monster. Uh, in fact, the hidden genius of M is that it isn't really a story about a murderer, but about the society around the murderer and how it reacts, uh, certainly when the letter of the law is thrown out in favour of a lynching. Uh, check out the clever sequence as Lang cuts between two meeting rooms, one a meeting between the top detectives on the case and the other between the city's villains, uh, both groups discussing their plan to catch the killer and both using pretty much the same dialogue as they do. Now, although this was Fritz Lang's first talking picture, whole stretches of M may as well be a silent movie, such was his command of sound and when and when not to use it. And he uses imagery to tell the story, that whole wordless opening abduction of the girl told in just a handful of suggestive shots. Uh, now, Lang was unquestionably a master of his craft M's half silent montage, half acting masterclass perfectly straddles the line that many filmmakers from the silent era struggled to cross. Now, in all honesty, I'm not 100% sure if this was 
the first use of it, but the device of having voiceover narration was certainly cutting edge in 1931. In Lang, being no stranger to innovation, just a few years earlier had made Metropolis, which even almost 100 years after release remains the most influential science fiction film ever made and one of the most influential movies full stop. Lang and his wife and co-writer uh, Thea von Harbo present a still audacious story of a city that unites to catch a killer, both because they are appalled at these heinous crimes and because a child murderer is bad for business. Now, this would be the couple's final collaboration. The film was released just before Hitler's rise to power in Germany and Lang's wife would become a Nazi party member. Lang, being of Jewish descent, would eventually find his way to Hollywood and make belters such as Ministry of Fear, um, Rancho Notorious and The Big Heat. Now, M was remade in 1951 by Joseph Losey, who's a director I do love, but I've never actually seen his version, to be honest. And if you have, let me know what you think of it. I think it's set in Los Angeles. Now, there's also a recent German TV series set in the story in modern day Vienna that does sound interesting. But this all proves that Lang and Von Harbu had again assembled something hugely influential. Now, for me personally, I'm not sure if it's the subject matter, uh, the atmospheric photography or Peter Lorre's skin crawling performance or just all of the above <laughs> that makes this 90 year old film still creep me out. I suppose traditional horror movies and crime thrillers have evolved into something more and more shocking and gruesome. <laughs> but 90 years ago, all Fritz Lang needed was an empty seat at a table and a little girl's lost balloon uh, to give you sleepless nights. Go check it out.